So last week I was just binge watching YouTube again and this video of Jimmy Broadbent testing a senior Rotex Max with clay pigeon came back into my recommended. And I thought maybe it would be a fun idea to kind of analyze his driving style and react to some of the things that go on behind the scenes within the team as well. So there will be setup and some driver coaching in there and uh, maybe see if they've added on some drama just for the video. Now if you guys didn't know, if you are new to this channel, I'm actually a senior Rotex Max driver myself. I've been karting since I was 8 years old and I've been racing in the Dutch RMC and in the B&O karting series since 2014 and 2015. That's why I'm also wearing my suit just to add to a little bit of credibility, right? Anyways guys, if you want to see more of my karting endeavors, there will be a playlist in the top right hand corner right now. So guys, let's take a look at Jimmer's driving style. And that's because I've been invited here by Attack Motorsport to have a go on what I've dubbed their big boy kart. So I'm going to have some coffee, try and wake up a little bit, and we're going to have a little chat with the guys at Attack and see what today is all about. Right, so this okay, is Max, okay. he runs things here at the Tap Motors. Well, Max, first of all, thank you for inviting me along. Oh, it's thank you, mate. You. We're really enjoying running it, so it's great. Well, no one, no, no one usually says that, so that's a nice uh, compliment. <laughs> Tell us a bit about the Step Up programme. This is sort of what I'm doing today. Yeah. What's it include? What's it, what's it aimed at? Yeah, so it's aimed at people who've done a bit of indoor karting or Club 100 or something, and they literally want to go somewhat faster. You can get the real racing experience, and, and the carts are... This cart will be raced in a couple of weeks' time, so it's not a detuned hire cart you're driving. And uh, you've got one of our quicker engines on there as well. So you're not driving just something, you're driving a, a race cart, and uh, it's your chance to find out what it's like. And I think you'll find it is very different to what you're used to, isn't it? So yeah, suit up. Okay guys, so the first thing I uh, immediately noticed from this video is, uh, well, the business model of Attack Motorsport. We don't actually have something like this here in the Netherlands. This is maybe something that's exclusive to the UK. I know I don't know that much about the UK karting scene, but uh, we definitely don't have that here. Here it's basically just race teams, and if you want to have a go with a faster kart, you just basically call up like a race team that's just aimed at racing, not at a team that is specifically there to, you know, provide the step up. So that's unique. Also, the guy was talking about how this was an actual race kart and that it was going to be actually raced, and... To be honest with you, I kind of doubt that they may be X race cards, but I don't think that they are actual race cards that, well, they take part in, in the UKC or something. Also, if you know a little bit about karting, you would have seen there that there are quite a little bit of older parts on there. So yeah, that to me that indicates that this is not an actual race card. It might be very close to an actual race card, maybe on the level like 90 to 95% in terms of quality, new parts and speed, but I don't think it's a it's one of their full on full on race cards. Okay, so guys, I have to pause it right there. Here you can see them that they're actually warming up the cart, which is a completely normal thing to do. But I don't know if you guys know that, but warming up your engine is actually banned by the FIA. And it has been since 2019 now, I believe. Now, I do have to say that uh, over the years, the uh, amount of enforcement that this rule by the FIA got has gone down significantly. Uh, back in 2019, when you just started your engine in the pits, then uh, 10 employees of the track would come running towards you and scream like, No, I said it, I said it But lately, I have noticed that the rule isn't really enforced anymore. You can just warm it up. But considering that this video is from 2020, um, yeah, kind of curious that they are able to get away with this. Alright guys, so he's about to go out and I'm really curious about how he does, so let's see. Alright guys, so here he said, I decided to take the first couple of laps slowly to get used to how the cart felt and uh, well, that's just really smart of him. If any of you guys ever get the chance to drive a Rotex, uh, if you have never done it before, then I would strongly suggest doing the same. Just take it easy for the first couple of laps. This cart is carrying on gold tires. Well, in the beginning, if you're a little bit new, then yeah, that's definitely the case. But once you get a little bit more confident, it's actually uh, really beneficial if you're able to push and be quick on uh, warm tires. My first time giving it 100% throttle, damn this thing is quick. Yeah, that's the reaction of most people. They really don't expect it to be this quick. After warming the cart, I found the number 18. He was also being looked after by attack, so I decided to follow him and try and learn a bit. Yes, very good job, Jimmy. That is really one of the best ways and quickest ways to learn new drivers how to be quick. I still do it myself also. This is a car trying to power over here at 65 miles an hour. I'm going to have to pause a little bit there. Um, yeah, it's partly the cart and partly due to his driving style. As you could see there, when he was on the straight, he actually turned in quite aggressively and then the backhand came. So yeah, that's just him being inexperienced and it might feel like power oversteer, but if you were just a tiny bit smoother and actually warmed the tires a little bit more, then that power oversteer would not have happened. 
But as I'm looking at this, he seems to be confident even for his first session. It, it really looks it really looks not bad. I realized his right hander is flat and so did my neck. You say this now, you said to me on camera. Yeah, so not gonna lie, that went a lot better than I thought it would. <laughs> Yeah, I have to agree uh, with this dude, to be honest. Uh, yeah, that, that looked kind of confident, especially for his first session. That, that really did not look too bad at all. So initial impressions first time out, you can see I'm sweaty. I was only out there for like eight minutes, so not, not any time at all. But it's just, it's so much different from the club. Yeah, I have to pause it there again, guys. Um, yeah, the, people often forget how intense this sport is and how physical it actually is. Driving a Rotex car at well, it's 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 a race car, so of course it's going to be tough. Because you went a bit quicker than we expected you to for your first go, which is keep keep saying those things, man. <laughs> keep saying those things. Unlike uh, Club 100, we can change basically everything on the car, uh, whereas Club 100, we just sort of jump in and go. Um, so we're just changing uh, the gearing. Your gearing is really important to um, a how it pulls off the corners, but also your straight line speed. So it's like trying to choose between doing the whole race in fourth or fifth. Um, so if we go higher on the gear, you'll come off the corners faster. But obviously if the straight's too long, you'll run out of puff at the end. If we go down, it should give you a lot more straight line speed. You'll just keep pulling as you get towards the end of the straight. Okay, nice. I mean, it was already pretty fast at the end of the straight, dude. I don't know. So, you so yeah, everything they said there is absolutely true. For beginners, it is usually a uh, bit of a normal thing to go a little bit higher on the gear. So it just pulls off the corner quicker. And that is because they, of course, are not capable. Uh, to keep the corner speeds up as much as more experienced drivers would. And that comparison of doing the whole race in 4th or 5th, absolutely bang on. They did however forget to mention one thing and that is that uh, the lower you can go in your gear the better. That's our philosophy as well. Because not only will a lower gear give you more top speed, it will also increase the time that the engine is in its power band. Especially with the Rotex engine. The Rotex engines have a really weird power band. There's like so much power between 6000 and 11000 RPM. Then it yeah, drops down a little bit and then after that it goes up again. So you really want to be in the optimum power band for as long as possible and you can achieve that by going as low as possible on the gear. I definitely felt more confident after my first run so I felt more comfortable with trying to speed it up a bit. And well, looking at this for a second run, this is properly impressive. He really does look confident in the kart. Of course he's not quite smooth enough yet, you can see him fiddling around with the steering wheel a lot. He should be a lot smoother but for a second run this is impressive. Also, the way he just... Let's pause it there and let's like, have a look at the replay. Let's rewind it a little bit. The way he came up to the right hand and actually like threw it in and got on the power immediately, he really... Oh, that, that's good, man. He, he really had the confidence to just floor it and keep it flat the whole way around. And that's really impressive. Let's have a look at that. So, off the power, turn in and immediately on the power. That's... And here you can see he's on the straight now, it doesn't really power over here anymore, it was a little bit smoother. Maybe I got a little bit too comfortable though. <laughs> nice one Jimmer, nice one. Uh, but that, that looked weird, wait, let's have a rewind there. Uh, it looked a little bit weird in my opinion, he was already like having oversteer, but usually you can just power through that, but then all of a sudden the car just snapped again, so I think that oversteer and boom, the car just went. I think. Maybe he, uh, with his right rear wheel, he touched uh, maybe yeah, a wet patch, but that, that, that spin looks it. kind of um, unnatural, if you ask the, me. The, I'm just trying to find like the, the correct way to throw the thing into the corner. Uh, it feels like it wants to go in with a bit of slide, but when you're then doing these... They look cool, these power slides and the way out, they're not very fast, so... It's just trying to find that, um, that in-between is the difficult bit, but... So far, so good. This thing is it's addictive, man. It's, it's amazing how much grip it has. I'm still finding it out. I had a couple of times in that run where I sort of started to understand it, but otherwise, yeah, still got a little learning to do. But that's part of the fun. So yeah, uh, Jimmy's commentary there, I think he got it pretty much bang on. These things do actually uh, get around the corner with a little bit of slide. And the fact that he already understands this after only two sessions, again, is really impressive. He really understands a car when he gets in there. So that's, yeah, that, that's pure talent right there. So when you're driving these properly, that's when they're actually quite stable because the cart picks up nicely and it basically tricycles around the whole corner. So the corners where you're actually fiddling with it a little bit, it's because you're not activating the cart properly, you're not going in, activating the cart, getting it to pick up. So it's sort of like touching the ground a little bit with this, either this tire or that tire, and that just unsettles it. Um, so basically, if you actually push it a bit harder, it'll work more with you. Um, same thing you always hear the F1 drivers going on about, you know, the faster you go, the more grip you have, and it's sort of the case with these. 
So I think the main thing, um, fundamentally, going around, you're looking really tidy. It's just a case of building the speed into it, not slowing down as much for all the corners, just carrying more speed, basically. Um, but for first day, really, really good. I thought Kieran was... Yeah, completely agree with his mechanic again. Um, the thing he was talking about, about the activating the cart and it picking up. Uh, well, that's a bit of a little bit of a technical talk that's unique to carts. Carts have a solid rear axle. That means that the two rear wheels cannot uh, rotate independently from one another. A perk of this is that you will have immense traction in conditions like the wet or when you are turning. But the downside of this is that when you turn in, the cart actually slows down a lot. Now, car manufacturers have already thought their way around this problem back in the 60s, of course. And that is by activating or making the cart pick up. So when you turn into a left-hand corner, the front left tire pushes down onto the track. And because carts have no suspension and the chassis is super stiff, the left rear inside wheel actually picks up. Or at least a lot of the weight is transferred off of that rear wheel. So carts actually go through the corners on three wheels and that's when it has grip. But if you're not turning enough, not using the grip enough or just going too slow into the corner, the cart might not pick up. So it will slow down, it will bog, it will slide and it, 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 well, it basically just feels like it's crabbing. Oh no, shit, can we cheat? <laughs> yeah. Yes, Jimmy, you can cheat, but that's not really uh, useful for you on this day. All right, so he's looking a bit more pushy already. And uh, he just told me, I'll probably cut that out, but he just uh, put on the screen that he was going to keep the uh, advice of the mechanic in his head and push more into the corners. So here you're saying he's starting to use the brake as a little bit of initial rotation. And you guys might know this as trial braking. I actually do that as well. I go in on the brakes and I only release the brakes when I'm like at the apex. So I'm going to go out for another session. Uh, probably only a couple more sessions left for me because my body is going to just disintegrate soon. Um, the goal really would be great to get a 34. I had a look at some footage of me coming out the last corner. Basically I'm shit through there um, at the moment. So I'm going to try and be less shit on the advice of Kieran. That's what he said. Just go be, be better, which is fair. And also you can use a lot more of the exit curb. I'm not using any. You can actually use quite a chunk of it. So that should... Yeah, what Jimmy says here about uh, him being shit in the last corner, uh, I think it's really good of him that he actually sees that it is his fault. A lot of drivers and sometimes even parents always like to blame the cart, me included, of course. Every driver has blamed the cart at some point. But if you want to improve yourself, you really, really got to accept that sometimes you're just shit at some points of the track and you really need to improve. And it can be a little bit hard for some drivers, but I have made a uh, yeah, special mind hack for that. It's actually good if it's your fault, because that means that you can improve it. If it's someone else's fault, then you cannot improve it. So here he says that he was much slower in this last stint and he was actually struggling to hold up his head during the last uh, part of the track. And that's completely understandable. Uh, back when I started, when I was a little bit smaller, I also struggled with my neck a lot. Oh, he actually makes a mistake. And uh, yeah, it, it was time for him to get in. It's a really smart idea for, of him to do that. Final thoughts, what today? So like I said to you earlier, we've had, when we have people down here, we don't usually see 35s. So if you'd have been the 35 straight away, pretty much. Level. Yeah, and your driving was really good. We had, you know, obviously there's lots of things to work on if you did come back, but this should put you in good stead for, you know, tomorrow. You, you know, your Club 100 tomorrow, so. In before last tomorrow. Yes, exactly. <laughs> but I want to go around and keep filming them saying that, so I can... Well, with the other mechanic, I agree too. Uh, there's, of course, lots of small things that he needs to work on if he actually wants to get onto the level of, like, a uh, actual Rotex competitor, like the smoothness and stuff. But yeah, doing something like this, if you are in rental cards and if you ever have the opportunity to get in a Rotex and just do a testing day, I would recommend it. It just helps you understand karting from a different perspective and that actually can help you be quicker in rentals. But it might not have been the smartest idea of him to do this test day before Club 100 because going into a race weekend absolutely ruined in terms of uh, physical fitness. That's not really a smart idea. All right, guys, so that's the end of uh, Jimmy's video. And with the end of Jimmy's video also comes the end of my video. Now guys, if you enjoyed that and you would like to give me something back for entertaining you, then I would really, really appreciate it if you would consider subscribing, leaving a comment and giving this video a like. Like I always say, for you it's only a few small clicks and a few taps on your keyboard. But for me, it literally means that I can continue being a karting driver and it just makes my dream come true. Now, if you're a bit like me, then you'll probably be thinking at this point, yeah, why is this guy judging everyone? Let's see what your driving skills are like. And fair point. So if you're like me, then I would strongly suggest checking out this video right here. This is actually the first race weekend I've had this year and it, it, it was an interesting one. So really go check it out. You will definitely like it. This video, however, is done now and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.